Do you mind if we talk about some of the papers? Do any papers come to mind that uh, have been annotated on Fermat's library? The the papers that we annotated can be about completely random topics, but that's part of the, what we enjoy as well. It forces you to explore these topics that otherwise maybe you'd never run into. Uh, and so, so the ones that come to mind are, to me, are, are fairly random. But one that I I really enjoyed learning more about is um, a paper uh, written by a mathematician, actually Tom Apostol, and uh, about a uh, a tunnel in a Greek island off the coast of Turkey. So it's very <laughs> I like this already. random. Uh, yeah. So this. Uh, okay, so what's interesting about this tunnel? So this tunnel um, was built in the sixth century BC, and um, and it was built in this in the island of Samos, uh, which is as I said off the coast of Turkey. And um, you're right, they had the city on one side, and they had a mountain, and then they had uh, a bunch of springs on the other side, and they they wanted to bring water into the city. Um, did building an aqueduct would be pretty hard because of the, the way the mountain was shaped. And it would also, you know, if they if they were under a siege, like they, they could just um, easily destroy that aqueduct and then the water w- wouldn't have any water supply. The, the city wouldn't have any water supply. And so they decided to build a tunnel and they decided to try to do it quickly. Um, and so the they started digging uh, from both ends at the same time through the mountain, right? And so like when you start thinking about this, it's it's a fairly difficult problem. And this is like 6th century BC, so you had very limited access to, to you know, the the mathematical tools that you had at the time were very limited. And so what this paper is about is about the story of how they built it and about the fact that for about 2000 years kind of the accepted the accepted explanation of how they built it was actually wrong. And so th- this tunnel has been famous for a while. There are a number of historians that talked about it since ancient Egypt. And um, and the method that they described uh, for, for building it um, is is um, was just wrong. And, and so these these researchers went there and, and were able to figure it, figure that out. Um, and so basically kind of the way that they thought they had built it was basically if you can imagine looking at the mountain from the top and you have the mountain and then you have both entrances. Um, and so what they what they thought and what this is what the ancient historians described is that they uh, effectively tried to draw a, a right angle, a right angle triangle um, with the two entrances at each end of the hypotenuse. Mm-hmm. And the way they did is like they would w- go around the mountain and kind of walking in a grid fashion. And then you can, you can figure out uh, the two sides of the triangle. And then after you have that triangle, you can effectively draw two smaller triangles at each entrance that are uh, proportional to that big triangle. Uh, and then you kind of have arrows pointing in each way. Got it. And then you can you you know at least that these that you have a line going through the the mountain that connects both entrances. Mm-hmm. The issue with that is like w- once you once you go to this mountain and you start thinking of doing this you realize that especially given that the tools that they had at the time that your error margin would be too small you wouldn't be able to do it, uh, it you 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 the just the fact of of trying to to build this triangle in that fashion the error would accumulate and you would end up missing you'd start building these tunnels and they would miss each other so the task ultimately is to, to figure out like really perfectly as as, clo- as close as possible the direction you should be digging mm-hmm. first of all that it's possible to have a straight line through and then exactly. what that the direction would be. And then yeah. you are trying to infer that by constructing a right triangle by doing, I, I'm not exactly sure about how to do that rigorously, like by tracing the mountain, by walking uh-huh. along the mountain, how to, you said grids? Yeah, you, you kind of walk as if you were in a in a grid and so you, you just walk in right angles. I so, right. But then so, you have to walk really precisely then. Exactly. You, you have to use tools to measure this. And then the terrain is probably Yeah, very a mess. hazardous. So this makes more sense in 2D. In 3D, it gets even weirder. Yeah. So, okay, gotcha. But so this method was described by like an ancient Egyptian historian, I think hero of Alexandria. And um, and then for about like, yeah, for about 2000 years, that's that's how like, that's how we thought that they'd built this, this tunnel. Um, 
and then uh, and yeah, and then these researchers went there and and, and found out that actually they they must have had to to use other methods. And and then in this paper, they describe these these other methods. And the, of course, they can't know for sure, but there's uh, they present a bunch of plausible alternatives. Uh, the one that for me was is the most plausible is that what they probably must have done is to use something that is similar to an iron sight on a rifle, the way you can line up uh, your rifle with a target off in the distance by by having an iron sight. Um, and uh, and they, they, they must have done something similar to that effectively with three, with three sticks. And that way they were able to line up sticks uh, along the side of the mountain that were all on the same height. And so that uh, then you could get to the other side and you could okay. and then you could draw that line. So this for me is the most plausible uh, w w way that they might have done that. And they, but then they, 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 yeah, they describe this in detail and other possible approaches in this paper. So this is a mathematician doing this? Yeah, this is a mathematician that, that did this. Um, Which I suppose is the right mindset and set of skills required to solve an ancient problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are mathematicians and engineers, there are a lot of things. Because they didn't have uh, computers or drones or LIDAR back then or whatever technology you would use modern day for the civil engineering. Yeah. <laughs> and another fascinating thing is that like, you know, after, effectively after the, the downfall of the Roman civilization, people didn't build tunnels for about a thousand years. We, we go a thousand years without tunnels. And then like only in like in late middle ages that, that we start doing them again. But, uh, but here is the tunnel, like sixth century BC, like incredibly limited mathematics. And they and they build it in this way, um, and 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 for and it was a mystery for for a long time exactly how they did it, and and then these mathematicians went there and and uh, yeah. and and basically with no archaeology kind of background were able to figure it out. How do uh, annotations for this paper look like? What is it? Uh, what's a successful annotation for a paper like this? Yes, yeah, so sometimes you're uh, for this paper. Um, sometimes adding some more context uh, on, on a specific um, part. Like sometimes they, they mentioned, for instance, um, these instruments that were common in ancient Greece and, and ancient Rome for, for building things. And, uh, and, and so in some of those annotations, I described these instruments in more detail and how they worked, because uh, sometimes it can be hard to, to visualize these. Um, then this paper, um, I forget exactly when, when this was published, um, I believe maybe maybe the 70s. Um, but then there was further research into this tunnel and more interesting, other interesting aspects about it. I add those to that paper as well. There's historical context that I also go into uh, there. Um, for instance, the fact that, as, a, as I said, that effectively after the downfall of the Roman Empire. No tunnels were built. Like that's something that I that I go, that I that I added to the paper as well. Yeah. So so those are and, so things. when other people look at the paper, how do they usually consume the annotations? So they it's like is there a commenting feature? Is the I mean like this is a really enriching experience the way you read a paper. Mm -hmm. What what aspects do you do people usually talk about that they, they value from this? So yeah, so anybody can just go on there and and uh, either add a new annotation or add a, co a comment to an existing annotation. And yeah. so you can start a kind of a thread uh, within an existing annotation. Um, and that's something that happens relative frequency. And then because I was the original author of the initial annotation, I get pinged. And so oftentimes I'll go back and, and, and add on to, to that thread. How'd you pick the paper? It's a I mean, first of all, this whole process is really exciting. I'm gonna, especially after this conversation, I'm gonna make sure I participate much more actively on papers that I know a lot about and on papers I know nothing about. I should both are when I say the paper. <laughs> I would love to. I also, I mean, I, I realized that uh, there's a, like it's an opportunity for people like me to publicly annotate a paper. like. Mm -hmm. like to, or do to, an AMA around the paper. Like, yeah, exactly. But yeah, but like be um, be in the conversation about a paper. It's like a place to mm -hmm. have a conversation about an idea. You get, The other way to do it that's much more ad hoc is on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. But this is more like formal and you could actually probably integrate the two 
They have a conversation about the conversation. So the Twitter is the conversation about a conversation and the main conversation is in the space of annotations. There's an interesting effect that we, we see sometimes with the annotations on our papers is that a lot of people, especially if we, the annotations are really well done, people sometimes are afraid of adding more annotations because yes. they see that as a kind of a finished work. Yes. And so they, they don't want to pollute that or yeah. uh, uh, and especially if it's like a silly question. This is, I don't think that's good. I think, you know, we should as much as possible try to lower the barrier for someone to jump in and ask questions. I think it only, only like most of the times it adds value, but it's a f some feedback that we got from users and, and uh, readers. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to, to kind of fight that, but um, well, I think I, I think if I serve as an inspiration, in any way, is by asking a lot of dumb questions and saying a bunch <laughs> of dumb shit all the time, and hopefully that inspires the rest of the, uh, other folks to do the same because but, that's the only w way to knowledge. I think is to be willing to ask the dumb questions.